Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at the major issues in the world of the BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. <clears throat> now, Russia in 2024 is now self-sufficient in food production and is currently a net exporter of foodstuffs. It produces grains, meat, poultry and fish in quantities in the country that is now uh, self-sufficient and is growing its export markets around the world. So how did it get there? Well, over the past 23, 24 years, Russian agriculture has made incredible leaps forward from the total devastation in 1999 when Russia was forced to buy um, grain on credit from the world's largest then exporter. Russian uh, has then continued to produce and has increased some tenfold over the last certainly 20 years, mainly in the last sort of uh, 10. Its progress, according to the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, has increased 87% since 2000. The volume of grain and meat production has doubled. Fish catches have gone up by over 60%. This has made it possible for Russia to be entirely self-sufficient. And if you think about uh, this, it's increased its exports by 30 times. That was according to the Minister of Agriculture, Dmitry Patrushev. He said two decades ago our products were mainly bought by CIS countries. Now today we send significant volumes to Africa, South America and the Southeast of Asia. He also said despite the external pressures, and I think he means san sanctions, we consistently support the food security of a number of countries and that remains one of our main priorities. In 2020, the export earnings from the agricultural sector uh, rose to uh, some 15.5 billion. <coughs> uh, by sort of uh, 2024, they're looking at around 45 billion. So the growth in production and export volumes have pretty much uh, doubled to from 47% in uh, 2000 to 86% today which is pretty impressive. Russia is now the world's largest exporter of grain and pulses, the largest exporter of wheat and fish. And it's the second largest exporter of sunflower and rapeseed oils and it's also a very large exporter of barley. Uh, according to the minister, he says the Russian Federation is a large and stable supplier to the world market on a wide range of agricultural products. He said, if we were to briefly describe the state of agriculture when Boris Yeltsin left the post of president, the most appropriate terms would be devastation and collapse. I think that's pretty accurate. A good example uh, was domestic demand in uh, 1999 was 70 million tonnes, but only 56 were available and as I mentioned earlier, the government had to turn to the US for 5 million tonnes of food aid. Moreover, those supplies were made on credit and Russia just didn't have the money, said uh, Max Maximov, who's a professor of corporate governance and innovation at the Russian Economic University. He also said that agricultural then was financed on a residual basis and there was no strategy for its development. Uh, enterprises in the agro-industrial complex had pretty much difficulty surviving and many of them went bankrupt due to very dubious transactions that happened around that time. Also, uh, investment was in no hurry to enter the sector because of the low profit margins. Another uh, of the Yeltsin area principles of the market uh, will decide actually blocked state aid and subsidies that the agricultural sector needed. The concept of food security for the country was not on the agenda at that time, says Maximov. Anyway, the heyday of uh, imports were certainly in the early 2000s. Literally, Russia was chasing imported goods. It seemed that every pro foreign product was of a higher quality. I mean, this example, the sh share of imported poultry was 70% in the early 2000s, and yet now uh, Russia is an actually an exporter. Uh, and basically, gradually, uh, it was discovered that Russian products were not actually in f 
inferior to the uh, imported ones in terms of quality and taste. And then the reverse process started. Of course, much of this has to be put down to uh, the efforts of uh, Vladimir Putin and his government and how they tackled the problems of the agro-industrial complex and made the change uh, f dramatically for the better. Firstly, as part of the concept of it being a national security issue, they addressed the cornerstone of food sovereignty in particular. They brought in state programs for the development of the agricultural sector and they basically put the strategic planning uh, into agriculture. Identified it as one of the priority areas and uh, feeding the country was certainly something that had to be done. So there we have now uh, where Russia has a modern agro-industrial complex and it's dependent only on what happens within uh, the country itself, weather, etc. And it's pretty much looked after being the terms which affect others like energy availability. Russia is a huge supplier of uh, fertilizer so there is no danger there. And because of Russia's decided not to go on the genetic engineering, uh, etc., uh, it's now developed its agricultural sector into being a major powerhouse. In fact, in 2016, uh, Russia had pretty much re reached the level of self-sufficiency and it then began to look at the export of its products, not only to, to previous markets of the CIS, but to China and other countries, particularly in Africa and Asia. <coughs> but in about 2017, you could see the major increase starting to happen and the acceleration really took place from 2018 to 2022 and growing by 20% a year. Now, uh, food products exported were around the 25 billion. They're now worth uh, around 45. So the food embargo also helped the Russia uh, to understand uh, it's necessary to produce at home uh, what it used to import. And they did something that was very interesting, which is called the Preferential Credit Programme. That was launched in 2017 and it helped meat producers uh, open up new markets in places like India and China. So now Russia is considered by the majority of major players in the food market as a consistent and reliable supplier and any attempts by the sanctions to uh, block this have failed miserably as uh, the global south uh, is now buying in vast quantities countries like Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Ethiopia etc uh, by large volumes of Russian agricultural products and <coughs> are going to continue to do so. In fact, uh, Russia has now replaced America and Canada and France in many of those markets. So, Russia basically has had an economic and agricultural miracle over the past 20 years. It's now developed a world-class agro-industrial complex where it continues to grow. Now, there are to say there are not problems. Yes, of course, there's always going to be problems. The development of poultry and cattle breeding and the development of the standards that are best in the world continue to develop. But Russia needs to focus now on the high value added products, which I'll cover in another video, where it's now exporting things like pork and pork products to China. Uh, in the volume of something like 500,000 tons a year. And what's interesting about the Chinese market is uh, they pay premium prices for things that uh, in the West they throw away, like pig's ears, pig's trotters, uh, and some of the entrails. So basically everything's beginning to uh, come together, not just with uh, meat products, but flour, sunflower, etc. So the trends are very, very positive and we can say that now uh, 
Russia is very much a agricultural and food production superpower and many many countries around the world now rely on it anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll follow up in uh, another video on uh, how uh, the food is produced and where it goes do visit our website seo bricks insight where we have details of all of these particular uh, articles that i've mentioned uh, with the people involved. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Bye